The new tax year has kicked off here in the UK and with it comes another £20,000 allowance for adults. You can spread this allowance across any of the ISA style investments. Of course, that does come with a few caveats. For the purposes of this video though, I'll be talking about how I'm gonna start investing my allowance in InvestEngine with a self-managed stocks and shares ISA. And before we go any further, I just wanna say this is not a sponsored video. These are my thoughts, my opinions. This is my experience with InvestEngine. This is what I wanna talk about today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about why investing with a stocks and shares ISA could be hugely beneficial in the long run. I'll tell you why I chose InvestEngine as my platform over all the other options out there. I'll also show you the kinds of things that I am investing in today. And right at the end too, I'm gonna to show you how easy it is to invest with InvestEngine for a hassle-free life. So stay tuned for that. So I discovered InvestEngine then in 2021 and after trying the platform, I realized it is everything I want for my investments. And so in 2022, 23, I made the jump to have my stocks and shares ISA with them. Fast forward to today and I have about 49, 50,000 pounds sort of invested across a range of platforms. And in the interest of keeping that growing, I'm keeping my ISA with InvestEngine for another year. And here's why. For a DIY ISA with InvestEngine, fees are virtually non-existent. InvestEngine do offer a managed service that charges a very competitive 0.25% fee, but for DIY portfolios, which is what I'm going for, there are no charges for the platform. There are charges with the ETFs you're investing in, but that's nothing really to do with InvestEngine. Every ETF has an associated charge. That's life, and you'll pay that on whatever platform you're on, whether you realize that or not. But for a DIY ISA with InvestEngine, there are no platform fees, no deposit fees, no withdrawal fees, 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 no holding fees, no inactivity fees, none of that stuff. So you're all good to go here. Fees can have a massive impact on your profits over the long term. Keeping fees as low as you possibly can, as long as you're not sacrificing any value, is really, really important. Let's jump to the computer and see why. The effect of fees is best seen by example. So let's start off with a zero initial investment, okay? And let's say over 25 years, we're going to see 8% return on that money. Now, there's no guarantee whatsoever you're going to get 8% or anywhere near it, but it's a figure that we often see online. Historically, the stock market has returned somewhere between 8 and 10% annually, depending on what you're looking at. But so let's let's stick with let's stick with 8%. We're going to invest for 25 years and we're going to put away 500 pound. The figures aren't really that important. £500 monthly might be a lot of money, might not be a lot of money, but it's it's good enough for this example. So 8% for 25 years, £500 a month, and we can calculate that. So we see that we have actually invested only £150,000 of our money, but over 25 years, we look like we might earn £325,000 if those figures are to hold true. 8% over 25 years. Now let's imagine that we have a management fee of 1.5% per year. So it doesn't sound like an awful lot, but you might be surprised at the figures. So let's cut this 8% down. And considering we have a 1.5% management fee, we're now sitting at 6.5% for the interest. Uh, 25 years, again, same 500 pounds a month. Uh, again, it's just illustrative figures. So let's see what that turns out at. So we can see again, it's the same amount of deposits, 150,000, but this time the interest earned is only 224,000 pounds. Whereas without the management fee, we were getting 325,000. So that's about 100,000 pounds when you consider a 1.5% fee on your investments. This is why keeping fees down is so important because over the long term, when you start to get into these bigger numbers and these these compounded figures here, when more and more of your investment comes from interest, it's really, really vital that you keep that management fee as low as you possibly can. Can you really afford to be missing out on £100,000? Not me. Somewhat related to fees, we'll have to think about peace of mind. Just because you aren't paying any fees with InvestEngine's DIY platform, you aren't losing out on any protection or customer assurances. You are protected in the same way you would be as if you were with all the other big players who look after your money. Your investments are kept separate from any company capital and should anything go really, really bad with your provider, if they go under for whatever reason, then you are covered up to £85,000 per account. It's probably a good reason why you should consider spreading your ISA allowance around a bit. Of course, this protection isn't just in case your investments go down. Any investment can go up or down and you should go in with your eyes open and understand the risks associated. This protection, as I say, is in case your platform goes belly up for whatever reason. 
that's what it's there for. The third reason I chose Invest Engine is less science and more just gut feeling. The feeling of Invest Engine is just right for me. There are no CFDs here. There are no individual stocks to buy. The whole operation has a very much a long-term feel about it. A long-term feel of sensible investing, the way it should be done in my opinion. As I say, this just fits for me. Tons of choice for ETFs. These wee baskets of stocks that offer instant diversification are central to what Invest Engine are trying to do to get folks interested in long-term investing. You're not really going to find anything here that caters to rampant speculation or whatever the new hotness is. Just realistic, low-cost investing, very much in the same vein as the granddaddy of all the investing platforms, Vanguard, except there's no 0.15% platform fee here. There's a little bit of science for you. Depending on what you're investing in, it could be 0.15% cheaper to do it with Invest Engine. Here's a little bit more science. Buying funds, various global funds in particular, is good for me because I can't beat the market. What? <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot! Oh, what a loser! 85% or something like that of fund managers cannot beat the market long term. What on earth is going to make me think that I can? I am a software engineer by day. I spend about five minutes a week investing, so I'm not about to try and pick individual stocks and make a fool of myself. Investing in low cost index funds allow me to invest hands off, no particular mental load, and it's dead, dead easy to be consistent on this basis. We'll get onto the computer in just a second once more, and I'll be able to show you how easy it is for me to be consistent with my investing. How easy it is just to let it run on autopilot and keep my stress levels down to a minimum. <laughs> Invest Engine also have a fresh user interface and a really easy to navigate website and app. You can see all the information about your investments, where they are in the world, what sectors you're invested in, how much your portfolio is allocated to particular stocks, just at the touch of a few buttons. It's really, really, really good, really smooth. Fractional shares that Invest Engine offer are another big thing. It means I don't have to have the right amount of money to invest in a particular ETF. I can buy as much of the ETF as I can with the funds I have in place. So for example, say a share in VUSA was 50 quid and I only had 25, well I can still buy half a share of that ETF. I don't have to wait, there's no money sitting on the sidelines if I don't want there to be. You can get as much money investing and working for you as quickly as you want to. So if any of that sounds good to you and you want to give Invest Engine a try, you can use my link in the description below to get yourself £25 bonus when you invest at least £100 for at least 12 months. This offer isn't available on their general website. You do have to go through an affiliate link, one such as what's in my description. You'll get a little bit extra. I will get a bit of kickback for referring you as a new customer to the platform and everybody's happy. Just once again, appreciate what you're going into. Your investments can go up or down. You may get back less than you put in. Okay, you've waited long enough. Let's just get onto the computer and we'll see what I am investing in here. Okay, here we are on the Invest Engine website. You can see here that I'm just sitting over £11,000 in my portfolio, my DIY portfolio at the moment. This is the entirely free version. Um, I manage it myself. I pick my own ETFs. I move things around if I want to. I haven't yet. Might do in the incoming year. So here we are in the main portfolio screen. So the things I'm invested in here. My portfolio is made up of four ETFs. A Vanguard FTSE Developed World, Vanguard S&P 500, a Vanguard FTSE 100, and a Vanguard FTSE All World High Dividend Yield. So the breakdown is basically 30%, 30%, 20%, and 20%. That means if I throw a thousand pounds into this portfolio for sake of argument, then 300 will be allocated to the developed world, 300 to S&P 500, 200 for the FTSE 100, and 20% of that 200 pounds would go to the all world high dividend yield. It's a little bit like an investing pie. If you take a deposit and you put some money in, then Invest Engine is going to split that up into the allocations that you have previously set. Something else worth seeing on this homepage here, if we have a net contributions toggle, if we click this, we get a little line and you can see whereabouts um, your net contributions were. So at the moment, just sitting slightly above what I've contributed. We all know it's been a pretty tough year in global stock markets. Um, I'm not worried about what's happening this year. This is all about what's happening in 10, 15 years time as we get that investment growing and that compounding happening and so on and so forth. So these are the four main ETFs that I am interested in investing in today. When you smash those all together, Invest Engine can tell you exactly where about your stocks are geographically, what sectors you're in and the holdings that you have probably most interestingly. Let's have a look at that. The simplest way to do that is just to click on this analytics button here. It's going to take you into the 
uh, details of everything you're holding. So this DIY uh, self-managed ISA here, you can see 58%, 59% is allocated to North America, around 20%, 19%, 20% for the UK, uh, Europe excluding the UK, Japan, Asia excluding Japan, emerging markets and so on. Down the road, we are entirely invested in equities here. No uh, bonds, no alternatives, no no cash at this point in time. Sectors the same. You can get all the information there on the sectors. The holdings is probably the most interesting one. People want to know what they're investing in. So 3.2% of my entire ETF holdings is made up of Apple, then Microsoft, Royal Dutch Shell, AstraZeneca, Alphabet, Google, Unilever, all the way down. And there are actually uh, 2,000. 686 holdings in my ETF, so pretty broadly diversified, although still pretty heavily weighted towards America and the developed developed world. Of course, some of those stocks are dividend paying stocks, and so when that happens, the dividends automatically end up in your Invest Engine account. I have Auto Invest On, and what that basically means is that anytime cash lands into my account, it's automatically distributed according to the weights that I have previously set up. That's pretty handy. You can take that one step further with the automation and you can actually set up uh, monthly top-ups. So if you get paid on a given day of the month and the first thing you want to do is invest, you can set that monthly top-up on and from there you can add your account regularly. It's dead, dead easy and you can choose a date that suits you. So if you're talking about consistently investing and ignoring the noise, this is a really good way to go about that. I actually quite enjoy moving money into my investment accounts most months, so I don't do that. I do have auto-invested available cash because I don't want any money sitting around if it's been given back to me in the form of dividends or anything like that. But in terms of monthly deposits, uh, I'll probably deposit different amounts each month depending on what's going on with the rest of my life. So I leave that switched off. But it's a great way to just set it and forget it and you're, you're flying. All right, I have some money to invest this month, so I'm gonna click on this invest button, hard to miss. And at the moment, I don't actually have any pending cash lying about in this. So what the first thing I'm going to have to do is add some cash. And it's going to take me off to my bank account and we'll get everything sorted out. I'll see you in just a couple of seconds. Two seconds later. Excellent. So the money's in. You can see there now that there's 500 quid in this DIY cash account. So what I'm simply going to do is uh, review this order. And we are going to buy based on the weights that I have allocated. So this, my 500 pounds is going to be 150, 150, 100, and 100. We've got a little bit smaller. Let's see it all at once. Confirm, and the buy order goes through. So that normally happens a couple of times a day, I think, with Invest Engine, but certainly by, uh, by tomorrow that money will be invested for me. And that's it, really simple. Automate as much or as little of it as you want. It takes away all that mental load for me and I'm really, really happy with how it's gone so far. So if Invest Engine is something you're interested in, why not have a look at how it compares against the granddaddy of them all, Vanguard, in this next video.